Hello everyone, my name is Brian and it's been a few years since I've posted uh, anything, especially regarding The Sims 4. I hope you're fine. Uh, I wonder if anyone is still uh, subscribed to this channel and uh, was maybe uh, expecting one day to see something new. Well, here it is. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, I'm not sure it's been so, so long. Anyway, uh, and I'm also doing something very different from what I used to do, and it's also what actually brought me back into the game. Um, and maybe I can talk a little bit about that. So you're just going to see the build is going to be something. It's not very clear for me how to describe it. I was inspi inspired by um, what we call the Vaporwave aesthetic, or uh, the city pop, or maybe the 80s uh, interior design, that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's gonna have, it, uh, yeah, gonna have bright colors and uh, open spaces and uh, things like marble, white, black, uh, purple, green, blue, uh, very bright colors. And this is not what I do at all. Uh, I used to do since forever, really. Um, <laughs> Just like old school gothic vampire Victorian stuff, uh, and I've been doing this forever because it was the style that uh, I loved. And probably, if you followed me, that's why you followed me, <laughs> because I never did anything else. But the story is that around maybe seven years ago, or something like that, maybe eight. Um, I started listening to what we call future funk or um, just Japanese 80s uh, disco music and stuff like that. And for some reason, I enjoyed it a lot. So I just kept listening to it. And uh, the more I try, I kind of lived with this music, the more I was seeing images of like retro stuff. 80s uh, things and also like 80s anime stuff and just overall my brain just sort of ended up liking what it kept seeing and uh, this is kind of normal it's just uh, some kind of psychological phenomenon but so uh, <laughs> even though I didn't really like this kind of thing back then because it's very bright very open very almost cold in a sense well you know, long enough exposure will make you like pretty much anything, I guess. So I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on the why I ended up liking that kind of stuff, but I did. Um, and uh, it even got to the point that my own uh, little studio that I live in uh, used to have this kind of old school. I don't have the right word for it, but like the kind of thing that you saw in my old building, uh, in my old Sims 4 videos, that's the kind of uh, furniture that I also had at home. And I'm changing a lot of stuff in my life lately, and I decided to also change the furniture. And I'm shifting from this old school thing to this new... I mean, it's not new, it's like sort of retro modern like 80s classy stuff uh it's weird but i like it now so <laughs> anyway and since i was looking for some inspiration on what to do uh, in my studio i decided to actually boot up the sims 4 and try stuff in it because i like uh, exploring and experimenting stuff in the sims 4 so um that's what i did and the overall architecture of the house came up pretty quickly usually i'm very slow and make a lot of trials before uh, setting up for uh, like a house plan but this one came uh, fairly early you know there is the round round walls in the front and that was just me playing with the new addition of uh, rounded walls in the sims because it's been so long since i've played the sims that i never actually tried this rounded feature uh, until uh, this build and um, it's nice i like it and I also thought it fitted the theme of like 80s modern uh, aesthetic very neatly, so that's what I went for. Um, of course, for the windows, we have generic 
modern, boring stuff. I kind of like them, but I wish we had more uh, windows, especially windows with like that 80s aesthetic, because I mean, I have something in mind that doesn't exist in The Sims, but it's okay. Here you can see me play, by the way, with like some very funky colors, and I just wanted to have fun, you know? I think uh, the 80s were famous for uh, their uh, simple geometric shapes, and very bold, vibrant colors. So that's what I went for. And like high contrast, of course. So I went with like this very weird purple and green uh, color scheme, uh, even though the house is uh, kind of bluish. So it's a very weird uh, blend of colors, but I think it's fun. And I wanted to do something like fun uh, and colorful and like slightly modern. And it's like a mix to me overall, the house is like a mix of something uh, classy, something fun, and something uh, cozy in some places. Like, uh, I think the bathroom is pretty classy, I think the bedroom is pretty cozy, and I think the uh, first ground is fun. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, but it's only, of course, my own perception of uh, this house. And... Um, I didn't struggle too much with it, um, like, I knew where the kitchen was gonna go, I knew pretty much where everything was gonna fit, I wanted to start with a very small home, and I think I'm gonna do a little uh, more homes in the same style in Willow Creek, and uh, I'll see how this goes as uh, time goes on. Uh, so, very small home, just like a one bedroom kind of stuff for maybe uh, one person or a couple, I don't think you could have like many friends or a family or stuff like that over because you're gonna see the bathroom is quite special. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it was a lot of fun for me to play with. I'm also trying like uh, really like every furniture, every window, every color palette, uh, whatever. Almost everything that I use in this house is way out of my comfort zone. I never, never, never do anything with like some kind of modern, clean, pure, um, abstract. I, I'm not sure I don't have like minimalist. It's not minimalist, I guess, but it's like simple shapes, right? And not oversaturated uh, apartments and interiors and whatever. And that's not really my style. I usually do things that are very, very... I mean, I guess they're often kind of warm and, as I said, old school and uh, with lots of little... Uh, uh, how do you call that in English? Like the picture frames, you know, the paintings on the walls, like lots of little details here and there. And, of course, for this new kind of modernish build, I wanted something more clean and open and I never do those big open space. I like putting walls everywhere and doors everywhere and I like uh, putting curtains everywhere and making everything very dark and uh, almost creepy, right? I love <laughs> I love creepy old school stuff like manors. Like my dream house in real life would be some kind of haunted manor, something that you see in a Resident Evil game or alone in the dark or uh, something from a horror movie. Uh, just a lonely, isolated, um, haunted manor in the woods. <laughs> Honestly, that's like my dream house. I know it sounds a bit weird, but whatever. <laughs> I just love this aesthetic a lot. And so doing things with like white uh, sofas, bright green walls, uh, glass tables and so on is very weird to me. Uh, at least I have to... I always do that, but check the... I check the colors of everything. I tried like so many different options for pretty much anything. And still that was a lot of fun. And I hope I, I hope the speed is okay and the camera isn't jiggling too much. Uh, I'm not sure that's the right word, but whatever. Because um, I'm not used to recording uh, audio for my videos. Uh, I'm not sure why I decided to do a speed build this time, but I thought it'd be funny. And uh, I can't see the screen very well, like my recording and editing software is not very smooth. 
and my computer is kind of crappy, so I hope the end result will be fine. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. I tried a lot of things for the kitchen that we see now. Um, I tried messing around with like the shelves and so on, and in the end I went for something more simple, but you can see all the trials I do and the kind of ideas I'm trying here and there, and those are not exactly new ideas to me. I often reuse things I, uh, I used in previous homes, uh, but yeah, it's that very crowdy, detail-heavy style that I used to have and that I'm not really going for here, so... Yeah, here it is. You also see something that I find very interesting in what I thought I saw in uh, 80s homes, which is like walls with windows inside the home. And this is like very weird, but I kind of like it. It gives this very weird feeling to the home because to me glass is a very cold material, right? I don't really want to touch it, it feels cold and since it's transparent it makes the room more open and bigger and a, a bigger, more open room to me is also colder so like there's lots of details that make the home cold to me and I usually like very warm homes but I don't know, I guess it's the contrast. I don't know what it is, but it's, I'm kind of fascinated by uh, this kind of inside architecture, so I went for it and I kind of like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see me playing with some very weird colors, like the purple sofa and whatever. Uh, and I guess purple sort of became my favorite color over time. Uh, in the past it was green, and now it's purple, and I'm not sure why, but... Anyway, there it is. <laughs> so I went with this weird uh, purple and green uh, combo. And I guess this kind of very high contrast mix of colors is also quite uh, inspired from the 80s because uh, now in like contemporary interior design, I believe that the trend is more dull colors like beige, white, cream, and uh, very low, soft, uh, kind of cozy, but mostly like sandy colors. Uh, at least that's what I see in the higher end of uh, interior design stuff. Uh, I'm not a specialist though, and I don't consult this kind of thing every day, so <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'm completely wrong, but uh, uh, anyway. I also saw some kind of revival, actually, of this old-school bold, vibrant colors uh, trend from the 80s, and I'm not sure how they called it. I, I knew there was a name for it, and uh, yeah, whatever. It's not very important. We're not here to talk about like trends and stuff like that. We don't care. Uh, we're here to see some kind of funky build that uh, a guy made uh, after a few years of not playing the Steams. And of course, I'm trying to put mirrors uh, in some places, because I also believe that big uh, almost like wall-covered mirrors uh, were very popular in the 80s uh, and I think they are absolutely fantastic so I tried to put some uh, in some places uh, there's mostly gonna be a lot of upstairs but uh, I think it's gonna be yeah interesting and alright I'm playing around with like uh, plants and decoration to make the house a little more interesting and yeah, I'm so not used to having those big, big spaces, uh, and like, see, I'm gonna put like one thing, I believe, in this uh, on this table, like some kind of dragon funky thing, and I uh, I chose it because it has funky colors, and I thought I would make a house with with funky colors, but like, yeah, I usually put like some kind of clutter. I'm very into what I think people call clutter core in, in a sense uh, so which is like putting lots of shit everywhere and making the house uh, quite detailed uh, but I don't know I think it's, it's very hard to find a good balance between uh, having details and making the house appear 
make it lived by people and also make it look clean and well composed and yeah balanced in uh, where the stuff is because if you don't want to end up in the maximalist end of things right and i saw this is a fairly uh, recent uh, movement the maximalism that was uh, actually uh, i mean it appeared to be in opposition to minimalism right which is when you put as few things as possible like you have i believe almost no decoration and really the most basic most bland furniture ever and uh, it's to me very depressing and some people went in the opposite direction and put like as many details as they could everywhere and like the even the walls and the fabric of uh, like sofas and chairs and everything is just oversaturated with details and this um tires my eyes very very quickly like in five seconds i want to look away <laughs> because it's just too much information and i get overwhelmed so to me finding the right balance between a few details here and there but still like a balanced composition uh, is what i try to achieve and it's often very difficult and i often have to add and erase stuff left and right to make things uh, appear to my eyes fairly balanced and this is especially i think noticeable in like the garden area because like in my early builds you can see things from like 2000 between uh, 2018 i believe maybe 17 between 17 and 19 at least i used to when in my very first build but a lot, a lot of plants and flowers and bushes absolutely everywhere and I would oversaturate my gardens with it and uh, now I go for a much more, uh, I want to say balance, but uh, I don't know if it's balanced to you, but like I try to have a big flower here, two small over there, a few rocks here and there and like to even out and uh, make it both um, and even and like somehow even in the unevenness i mean uh, i'm sure i'm not clear at all but i hope it will uh, speak for itself on the screen by the way i hope you can uh, understand me fairly correctly because of course english is not my main language and uh, i went back and listened to like an old um, speed build i did uh, of like very big mansion and uh, I have such a weird English accent, like some people say it sounds French and I know on some words it sounds French and on some other words it sounds like gibberish to me, <laughs> so whatever. Here by the way you can see me play with colors and I did something that I almost never do which is mix clothes and weird colors together, like I have purple walls and like pink uh, pink lamps and a bright blue uh, bed and those are very weird to me like I never do s uh, at least as many colors as this at, in the same place I used to be very simple with colors like maybe two two like special colors uh, maximum in a room and here I have like three if you don't count the black and grays and whites and so on uh, so it's not a lot more, okay, I agree, but like, and I think it turned out fine, but as I, <laughs> as I said, this is me going out of my comfort zone. Uh, and I think this bedroom is a bit cozy. I think the pink and the curtains add a lot of warmth to the room, um, and I like it. And you can see, by the way, I was too caught up in what I was saying to talk about it, but the bathroom is opened. And it's very weird to, I guess, a lot of people to have an open bathroom, because if you invite a friend over, and maybe you're like showing them something on the computer or whatever, and they want to go to the bathroom, well, maybe you're, you're gonna have a very awkward eye contact while they uh, are on the toilet, so... Yeah, there's a like reduced intimacy in this bathroom, but 
I don't care <laughs> because it's my room, it's my home, and I think it looks very cool. I like how open it is with like the um, candles uh, wheel thing from uh, I think it's like this spa uh, wellness whatever expansion, and I really like this uh, this set of candles. Yeah, I think it both looks like modern and clean and uh, interesting to divide a room and stuff like that. So I often use it in my builds. Uh, and I like use it, using it in funky ways, like as some kind of wall for the bathroom. I think it's funny. And so if you live alone, it's fine. If you live with like an intimate partner, uh, I also believe it's fine. Uh, if you're not uh, too... Uh, <laughs> If you like accept that people uh, can go to the bathroom and whatever, I don't know. I know there is there are like controversies about can you use the bathroom in front of your loved one or whatever. And personally, I don't care about that kind of stuff. Um, but whatever, what right to eat the room? Sorry, give me a sec. I I dropped something. I I it's gone. I I'm gonna have to find it again. I lost uh, like a ring that I was playing with. I should not fiddle with things. Anyway, now we're reaching the gardens and I think the gardens and the outside part really uh, make that vaporwave aesthetic shine because, you know, this vaporwave stuff, which is, I guess, I don't know how niche it is. And I uh, looked for it uh, in the Sims gallery and I did find quite some things with the vaporwave tag. So I know I'm not the first. Uh, and I know it's fairly modern, like maybe it's, it appeared sort of after 2010. And I'd say it mostly appeared and took off around 2015, 16, 17, so on. Um, but I'm not sure. That's like just my overall internet impression. And this like sort of uh, aesthetic movement which seems very uh, restricted to the online world, uses a lot of like uh, old Roman uh, symbols, right? Like uh, marble statues, Greek columns, uh, checkboard floor, and uh, so on. And I think I <laughs> that's what I went for in this garden, with like the broken columns and the statue of the girl and the waterfalls and whatever and it's like uh, I really like this closed garden I think for a small home it uh, fits the place perfectly and makes a very nice and interesting fresh spot to rest and maybe read the newspaper read a book or uh, just chill and talk with friends or whatever uh, I'd quite love to live here um, and yeah that's just my home maybe if it was my own home I designed the ground floor a little different because even though it's very funny and interesting, maybe it's too funky for my own taste. Uh, but the upper floor is quite nice. I forgot to... Oh my... No! No, that's okay. Oh my god, I'm so... <laughs> so stupid. Like, I thought I forgot to add um, some kind of office and desk uh, place with the computer because I had a very strange plan for it in the beginning where I wanted to kind of make it uh, float in some kind of weird island in the second floor like in the kind of uh, open area that uh, lets the first floor appear and then I just put it in the bedroom so whatever whatever here you can see me uh, design the garden and you can see what I was trying to talk about earlier which is this um, Kind of mix between putting a few details here and there and uh, trying not to oversaturate everything and putting things where it matters and where it, uh, yeah. Because you, the thing I didn't like with like oversaturated um, gardens is that it didn't match with the surroundings of the house, right? You kind of have to not forget that you have a limited terrain space. And if you put flowers on every inch of it, then it's going to look a bit weird when you zoom out, at least in my opinion. So here it is. I think the 
building is coming to an end. Actually, it's the speed build, and uh, you can still uh, see me play with colors and with. Okay, all right. So I had a little issue with my uh, recording software, but it's all fine. I didn't lose anything. Um, the speed build is coming to an end, so I'm gonna stop right here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was very new to me, very different. Uh, I kinda like it. I'm gonna try more stuff, um, and I hope uh, I'll see you again there. If you made it this far, please let me know what you think about it, and uh, have a good, uh, a good day or a good night or whatever. See you. Kisses.